Hi, hi, you three. Great to see everybody again. Um, really good day yesterday. Um, adding money, a lot, a lot of really good answers. Um, so everyone seems to be able to get that petitioning money, particularly. So adding the pounds first, then adding the pennies. Also, some people were very effective at adding, doing, at converting the pounds and pennies into just pennies, and then doing column addition. So really, really impressive. One thing that's worth noting and remembering is four pound nine pence is not the same as four pounds ninety. So really thinking about our placeholders and our value of four pound nine pence because we haven't got this zero here the way we're writing. We're saying four pound and nine pence. That is not the same as four pounds and ninety. We really have to think about differentiating between those two. Okay, well done. So I've just got the answers up here. Again, a lot of people were petitioning answers, taking the pounds first, adding the pounds, then adding the pence. We can do it one of both two ways, or we can convert pounds and pence into just pence. Add column addition for the two, the two amounts of pence. And then converting that back into a pounds and pence answers. Answers. So well done, everybody, for doing that. Okay. If we were doing adding money yesterday, what do you think we're going to be doing today? What's the inverse operation of addition? The inverse operation of addition. And so that's what we're going to be doing. Today. Okay. Fluency first. What I'd like us to do is. As quickly as we can, we're going to do a double and a half in machine. If I think about six, if I double it, I get 12. If I put three into the machine, if I double it, I get, well done, six. If I put five into the machine, if I double it, I get, okay. So what I want you to do is to quickly and effectively write the doubles of each of these numbers, quickly as you can. Okay, you can pause that now. Once we've completed the doubling machine, I'm going to go and do the inverse. This is multiplying by two. This is dividing by two. So imagine four going in. How would it get to two? I would divide it by two. So half of four is two. Half of 10 is two. The other way I can think about it, this answer, if I double it, would become this number. Okay, so what I want you to do for your fluency first is to quickly complete those tables. Okay, fantastic. Once you've done that, you can go fast forward, and restart. Okay, so the inverse of addition yesterday is going to be subtracting amounts of money. New learning is practiced. So we can work out how much change Sophia should get from the shopkeeper. This subtracting of money is really important. In most circumstances, if we go into a shop, we might pay, we might be buying something for £7.99. I might give the shop a £10 note. So the question is, how much change should I, should I get back? It's really important to know how much change that you are due back from the shop. Okay, so that would be £7.99. £10. Remember, how many pence is £7.99? We could do 1,000 pence, take away 799 pence. We could do a column subtraction, or alternatively, we could use a number line. £7.99, the change is going to be the difference between the £10 note and the £7.99. So I might do a number line from £7.99 to £8 which would be a jump of a penny, one pence. I'm at eight pounds and I want to know the difference between eight and 10 pounds. It would be a jump of another two. So the two jumps in total would be two pounds and one penny. Therefore the difference or the change I would receive if I paid with a tenner, something seven pound 99 would be two pounds and a penny. Okay, so really good for working out how much change Sophia should get from the shopkeeper. Okay, so let's have a look at our first question. 
Sophia buys a cake. How much money does she have left? That's the question. So Sophia is buying a cake. But first of all, we've got to find out how much a cupcake costs. A lot of C's there, a bit of alliteration. Cupcake cost. So we're looking at the cupcake cost. And the cupcake, one cupcake, is one pound ten pence. So we need to know how much Sophie started with. She started with two pounds fifty. So I could say she started with two pound fifty. I've spent one pound on a cupcake. That will leave me one pound, and I've spent ten p. So I'm left with one pound. Quite straightforward. Yep. So here we've got two pound fifty. We put that in a change situation, taking off the ten p, taking off the pound, and we're left with two pound forty. Sorry, one pound four. Because that's another way of doing it if you've if you've got coins to move and take away. Another way would be to look at it as a sorry, that's the second question. So let's have a look at this in a second with our second question. Basically, the first question's answer is we're starting with £2.50 and we're subtracting £1.10. And we're left with one pound forty. Of course, if we'd like, if we wanted to, we could have put our two pound fifty in pence and got two hundred and fifty pence. One pound ten in pence is one hundred and ten pence. And then we can just do our column subtraction to leave one pound one hundred and forty pennies, which is the same as one pound and forty p. Okay. Need to make sure we put the units in there. So well done. Quite easy. Second question here is going to be how much cheaper is the loaf of bread than the bread rolls? So I've got a loaf of bread here and my bread rolls here. We see that bread rolls, loaf of bread. Do we want to know which is the difference between the two pound fifty and the one pound eighty nine? The difference is a subtraction. So I can I, the, how I would do this. You can use a number line. How I would do this. Which is the most expensive item? That goes on the top of my column addition. So two pound fifty. What's two pound fifty in pence? £2.50 in pence is, I'm just going to write this out anyway, over here, 250 pence. Because £2 is 200 pence, and then we've got an extra 50p. My loaf of bread costs £1.89, or I can say that in pence as 189 pence. The difference between these is a subtraction. That's the number sentence I'm going to complete. Column subtraction. Now, zero, take away nine. I haven't got any units in this column or ones. Here's my ones or units columns, my tens and my hundreds. My ones, my tens, my hundreds. Tens. Okay, so I'm Changing that 10 pence or renaming that 10 pence into 10 ones. Now I've got 10 ones, take away nine ones, I end up with a penny. Here I've got four tens, eight tens. So I'm going over here. You can imagine changing this pound, one pound, into 10 10 pence pieces. Now I've got 14 10 pence, 10 pence pieces, and I'm taking away eight. That would be six. Eight in my head, counting the difference. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So that's where the six comes from. My answer is sixty-one. What is it? It's not sixty-one apples or pears. It's sixty-one p. 
Okay, so just look at this. Find the difference between the costs I counted on. The number line, or I went 250, take away 189, it left me with 61. My number sentence, and there's my answer. So, how do I say that? How much cheaper is the loaf of bread than the bread rolls? How much cheaper? The loaf of bread is 61 pence cheaper than the bread rolls. That would be my ideal answer. Okay, fantastic. So let's have a look at our next question. How much more does the loaf cost than the breadstick? The loaves cost, the loaf of bread costs 189, breadsticks 89. So again, I how much more does the loaf of bread? I'm going to convert it. That's what I've decided. This is my favorite method. So I'm using the column subtraction method. That is the loaf of my cost of my loaf of bread. That is the cost of my French stick, 94. Now, I need to do a subtraction to find the difference. Nine ones take away four ones is five ones. Eight tens take away nine tens. I'm renaming one of those hundreds. Now I've got the difference between 18, between 18 and nine. Nine in my head, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. The answer is nine, okay? So nine. 95, not pairs, it's 95 pence. The answer here, 95. Or you could have done it on the number line. You could have done it on the um, number line. So here I've got 94. I'm doing the jump for a pound. Then I'm doing the jump all the way to £1.89. So I've got 89p add 6p, which is how I would do it on a number line. Okay, this is probably the difference here, why I chose the column method to find the difference rather than number line, is because I've got to do this operation first, I've got to do the drawing, I've got to do that, and then I've still got to do a sort of col column addition there, to get the same answer, this original column subtraction. So I would find that more efficient in finding the difference. But you can use both methods. It doesn't really matter which method you, you, you use as long as we get the right answer. Okay, let's have a look at question two. Okay, so we've got Lee has some money. Lee buys a custard tart. How much money does Lee have left? Okay, so first of all, we have to know how much the custard start cart custard tart cost. The custard cart the custard tart costs how much? 56. How much do we think Lee's got? Well, I can see a five pound, see a two pound, and I can see a one pound. I think he's got eight pounds. I think he's got, I think he's got eight pounds, sorry, just eight pounds, I'm going to cross that, so I was just getting a bit carried away there, I'm just going to write, I think he's just, okay, now it's going to take away 56p, if he was taking away 50p, I know that I'd have about seven pound 50, I'd have seven pound 50 left, okay, so, to these answers, so Lee has, how much do we think? What's eight pounds in pence? Eight pounds in pence is eight hundred. Eight hundred. Eight hundred pence. 
and I'm using by my lovely custom card. That's what I've done. So zero takeaway six can't do. Zero takeaway five can't do. So I'm renaming these hundreds. I first end up with n lots of tens. I'm going to rename one of those lots of tens. And ones. Now I've got ten ones. Take away six ones is four. I've got nine tens. Take away five tens is four tens. And I've got seven in the hundreds column. So what I've got is seven hundred forty-four more. I've got seven hundred forty-four. So how much has Lee got left? 700 is equal to seven pounds. And 44 C in. Okay, so next bit of the equation. What I want you to do is to have a go at these predictions. Work before you make um just predict the answer and then have a go at these. And then, of course, we need to go on to our questions. I think these questions are quite simple, really. Okay, so you can take a screenshot or go onto the page and have a look at those questions. Have a go at least the first, first four. That'd be fantastic if you could do that. Remember, there's a lot of finding the difference. We're looking for that subtraction or number line approach, column subtraction or number lines. Have a go at those first four questions and then just move on to the challenge if you really feel like it. I want everyone to have a go at those first four questions, then have a go at the challenge if you've got time. If it takes you too long, we've been as it's um, our last day um, before our screen this day, so that I'm looking forward to that. I know everyone in school is looking forward to it. So we've got a bit of a day without any any screens or any screen time. So loads of fun activities. Okay, year three, have a go at those questions. I'm looking forward to seeing your answers. Um, so I won't be on screen on Friday. So if I don't see you before, which we're not, we won't, I don't think we'll be having um, a great assembly either. Have a lovely Friday and I will see you all back in a week's time because we've got half term. So I'll see you in about, ooh, about eight days. So have a lovely week off, get plenty of fresh air, do loads of physical activity, do a bit of time tables, maybe read a book, but really have a fun time with your family and keep safe. So lovely to see you all, year three. I'm looking forward to seeing all your work coming in. Thumbs up and have a fantastic week off. Brilliant. See you. Bye.